Hello guys, welcome to Testing Academy. My name is Pramod, and welcome to the series of API testing interview questions and answers. Right. So guys, this is a part three of the video. If have if you haven't watched the uh, part one and the part two, I would suggest you to watch them. And in this uh, interview questions and answer video, we are going to uncover nine more questions, which are most of the time are asked whenever we are doing the API testing interviews. All right. So let's get started, guys. So uh, I hope you are able to see it. Uh, it's a mind map, and uh, mm -hmm. this is a part three. So uh, these are the questions that we are now right now we are going to tackle. So let's go them one by one. All right. So uh, the first question is that uh, it's mm -hmm. in it's very uh, I would say most of the time uh, if you go to any kind of interview question, most of the time people will ask you, especially to APIs. That what is the major difference between a put and a post request, right? So let's start with the post request. So in a simple manner, post request is basically it's a type of HTTP method, and it's used to create any kind of new resource. For example, uh, you have a student database, and you want to create a new student, then you will basically going to perform a post request, right? So uh, as I mentioned here, that post sent the data to a particular URL. Or URI, and expect the resource at your URI to deal with the request. So basically, we are what we are sending is that we are sending a body containing the student information, and we are sending it to the uh, a particular URL, and that student will going to create uh, on that database. All right, after that, so we are creating, and whenever we are creating a new resource, we call it post, right? So uh, and the major difference between the put and uh, post is that the post can be used uh, put can be used to create or update both both ways right so put is uh, a, you can say very much uh, can do two tasks right so put puts a file or a resource resource can be anything like html documentation image file anything like this and basically puts puts a file or a resource at a particular uri and exactly at the uri if there is if there is already a file or a resource that is there, then put changes the file or the resource content, right? If it is not there, it's going to create one, right? So this is the important uh, point, right? Post is used to create a new resource, but if you are doing a put request, if the resource is not there, it's basically going to create new one. If it a resource is there, we are going to update that resource, right? And we are updating every uh, you can say value means basically we are replacing the uh, new resource with the old resource old resource with the new resource right so that's the major difference and guys please uh, I would suggest to go to this URL I'm going to open this URL right now this one so uh, just uh, I'm going to mention them uh, in the description and I would suggest you to read this article it's very uh, great answer given by uh, on the stack overflow right uh, about the difference between the put and post all right so uh this was a first question right so the second question mainly people ask is that what is rpc in the api testing so rpc is basically the remote procedure calls and it's basically executing any kind of procedure on a different machine or you can say on a certain kind of server right and if i explain you in a simple manner let me zoom this one so what exactly going on is that client is there uh, he can call a remote procedure a procedure that is re not returned at a client side but at a server side so it's basically going to send some request for example if client sends 2 plus 2 and the server contains the procedure which basically returns a sum of it so it's going to re return the message and the message will contain the sum of it for 2 plus 2 is 4 so the 4 is going to rip uh, uh, will come as a response body right so that's how the rpc works cool and uh the another interesting question after people will ask is that uh what is the major difference between rpc and the web service that we are using and so uh whenever we are thinking about the document style web services we can transport the xml message as a soap request which is not po not possible in rpc so rpc works in a procedure way means we are calling a certain procedure or a function with some arguments right whereas uh, whenever we are dealing with web services right 
uh, we uh, as we know that in soap we are basically mm-hmm. sending the data in a soap envelopes which contains header body and uh, bo- uh, header and bo- header body parts right so in, in the rpc we are only sending some parameters whereas uh, in the web services we are basically sending the full envelope containing every information about it right and another interesting point is that document style web services is more appropriate in some application where xml message behave as a document and content of the document can alter and intention of intention of the web service does not rely on the content of a message so basically uh, what we are he- say he- uh, saying is that uh, web services document style is more appropriate whenever uh, whenever the communication between the two services is based on xml messages right and xml messages are basically going to behave as a certain document right so uh, it's a quite different than a remote processors because in the remote processor calls what we are doing is that we are passing certain parameters or certain kinds of information and calling the remote processor to execute them and give us the response body all right so that's a quite different uh, than a document style web services all right so uh, let's come to the fourth question which is the most important question uh, it uh, let me close all of them yeah yeah this is like a, another interesting question and most of the time it will go uh, it's going to be asked if you are uh, if you mentioned anything about the api testing especially in interviews right let's start with the get request so basically they'll ask you that wh- what is a get request and so get what is put patch delete head and trace so i'm going to give you more information so the get request is very simple it's basically allows you to retrieve all the resources uh from an endpoint for example if you go to this url scrolltest.com test question mark n1 is equal to n v1 we are basically uh, getting a resource with some parameters right and another interesting point get is that it request remains in the browser history or can be bookmarked a Re- uh, get request should never me ma- should never be used while dealing with a sensitive data because the uh, parameter as you can see n1 and v1 are going to exposed in a url bar so we should never use sensitive data while doing the get request and get request is always used to retrieve information right it cannot send information so uh, another next point here is that uh, put basically post request that we have discussed uh, uh previously that put is used to create a new resource put request are never cached and they cannot be bookmarked at the right and most of the time we we cannot make a post request directly from browsers we we have to use certain kind of api testing tools to create post request right like postman and some other tools and a uh, post request doesn't have decision of data basically means that whenever we are sending a resource to be created uh, there is no restrictions on the data length means how much data that you want to send between the client and the server okay so that's what uh, about the post request put again it's a very similar to the post one but put can create a new resource mm-hmm. if it if the resource is not present and it can update the full res- uh, full resource if it is there right it puts a file or a resource at a specific url it replaces the file if it is not present put is again it's a known cacheable and it generally update the resource okay so that's the major difference between put post and pod again the important one here is the patch request which basically updates a partial resource like we have uh, in the example here that where we are patching a request basically we are doing a patch request to update only a small amount basically we are going to update a group group id endpoint with a small amount of activate or deactivating the request uh, a, a particular group so uh, we are only updating the partial resource we are not fully update if we are doing the full update it's a put request it should be a put request right right for example like uh, when we need to update only one field so, so we can use patch request so now uh let's uh, talk about delete and option these are very simple ones basically delete is used to delete a resource and options are basically used to get 
what are the uh, available stpp methods for this particular endpoint right similarly we have a uh, head and trace head is used to generally get the information about all the headers of this endpoint and uh, it is similar to get but it will not give you much information in body but it will give you information more in the header similarly the trace is there trace basically used to trace the request right most of the time they are not used uh, but guys um, i'll suggest you to again go through the put patch and post request and make sure you understand the difference between them all right i'm going to share these slides so that you can understand it better right and if you want to uh, get more detail about it i would suggest you to go to my youtube channel and uh, watch other tutorials and there i have explained it very well all right and uh, all right so uh, like uh, in this uh, but this is a question about what are the different type of return codes and explain the three codes that you use frequently so i would suggest you to go to this url especially because uh, these are like mm, the uh, you can say a cheat sheet especially for the stpp status code the most of the time what we use is that 201 which is like okay whenever we are creating a new resource so uh, 201 mm -hmm. is whenever a new resource is created and whenever we have successful post request it is 200 and most of the time you have seen that 404 not found whenever we have is a resource not found error and 500 whenever we have internal errors in ser in the server side right so you can uh, play uh, you can just learn them or you can just go through them but i would suggest you to just uh, just learn about this that 100 series is informationals 200 series are successful messages whenever is successful um, resources are created or something like this 300 resource uh, 300 uh, status codes are basically gives you redirections what kind of redirection we have and 400 are client so client client errors and the 500 are server errors right we have different type of server errors client error redirections are different all right just you need to understand these things okay all right so uh, now let's understand what is an api framework lots of people have asked me that what is an api so api uh, api framework especially so can we create an api framework means these are the questions that generally comes whenever they think about it right so and so i would suggest uh, so let's understand so framework it's basically nothing but it's a collection of patterns and a library to help uh, to help with the building of an application right so for example if you are doing an api testing so the libraries the patterns that you are using any kind of code that you are using or writing to basically test those apis better that is your api framework right again let me give you let's uh, discuss more about this one which is this point which is that we say that api framework is easy to understand during the process the config is used to hold the configuration configurable parts as well as as well as to the values to test run and besides within the config the automated test case should be represented in the format of parse table so not, they are just uh, telling you about that we have certain config files we have certain different files and we are basically writing certain test cases that are going to be executed and these proper structure with the libraries and the pattern that is used is called as api framework so i uh, i hope you are getting it if you are not getting it i will suggest you to go to some uh, other resource to watch out what is api framework and uh, it will give you more details about it all right okay so uh, let's understand what is the difference between soap and test soap is again it's a it's a basically an protocol which basically allows you to uh, communicate between two any kind of two computers two services and it's basically used uh, use xml messages right it supports only xml format and it doesn't support caching and it's very slower than rest and uh, it's it's like a custom application closely connected to a server right yes so uh, in soap client and server are very very much coupled and uh, soap of the stpp but envelops the message so basically the message that they are sending are uh present in envelopes envelopes are nothing but xml messages in a tree fa tree form which contains header and body part right similarly rest i have explained in the previous videos and i would suggest you to watch them it i know very extensive matter uh, it's a nothing but a server architecture or you can say it's a design pattern to create an apis and 
it supports caching it's faster than so and it's basically uses the http methods to communicate with mm -hmm. client and server and uh, rest client is just like a normal browser and uses the standard method application to communicate with server all right so that's the major difference between both of them now let's understand the other important what is what exactly needs to be verified in api testing right in the previous video i have discussed extensively how to test what are the test cases to be included in api testing and in this video we are going to uh, basically uh, discuss about what exactly needs to be verified while doing the api testing right so what we need is that we need to check the data accuracy of your api that is created what are the status code we have discussed earlier this i would suggest to go to again this uh, codes and just uh use them or you can just understand them uh, what are the response time it's coming error codes authorization checks and known functional test cases like performance and security most of the time people uh, forget about the performance and security i would suggest you if you are doing api testing especially as a qa or a developer i would suggest you to go and uh, create a concrete plan around the performance and security of the testing uh, of this api is also okay and i have created one video about the checklist for security testing of api i would suggest you to watch that okay so that's what exactly need to be verified while doing the api testing so uh, this is like a universal question and people generally ask what are the tools that you use especially for api testing and our favorite tool is postman again and we have extensively used soap ui and catalon studio and i would suggest to, uh, lots of people use jmeter also to do api testing but uh, uh, we have we even we are using some of the part of jmeter to do api testing and we love as i showed i have used it and uh, we have not used extensively but yeah we have created certain projects in as i showed it's a wonderful tool crate again it's an, another great tool to do api testing and it allows you to parallel execution as well as load testing of an api so again this uh, this crate api i believe has a great future and this as showed is evergreen right if you are concerned more about the manual testing part of it then postman is definitely a evergreen and when you convert all the scripts into new men then you can automate them also right and there are other tools in a different different language you can go through all of them right so that uh, that was all about it guys and we have covered nine another nine questions related to api testing and uh, if you have any kind of other question that you would like to get me answer or let's discuss about it and let's discuss about the, um, them in our uh, comments or probably in the next video all right so uh, uh, all right guys so thanks a lot and don't forget to uh, like share and subscribe mm -hmm. and uh, if you have any kind of question just comment down below i'm definitely going to reply and uh, thanks a lot and have a nice day